I'm Shalom in the home. Subscribe to the channel, Legendary Ross Corey. Uh, and today we're going to talk about Rastafari, Secret Rituals of a Rebel Faith. Welcome to the channel as we dive deep into the teachings and practice of Rastafari. Today we'll be exploring some of the hidden rituals of Rastafari, a side of the faith that isn't really um, always visible to the outsiders, but holds a profound spiritual significance for those within the movement or the liberty. Over the next 10 minutes, we'll uncover these lesser known rituals shedding light on how they connect Rastafari with their rituals, path, their community, and Jah, or Yah. So get your notebook pad out, take notes. You know, the groundation ceremony, you know, I was in um, Nabingi. Um, The groundation ceremony. Let's start with the groundation ceremony, also known as the Nyabingi. This ritual is one of the most sacred and powerful practices within the Rastafari movement. While many are familiar with drumming and chanting that occurs at a larger gathering, the groundation itself is deeply spiritual. It honors Ali Selassie, Jah, and the ancestors. The purpose of the groundation is not just a social gathering. It's a spiritual ritual meant to connect um, participants with Jahs through music, prayer, and collective meditation. It's a time for the community or the Rastafari uh, gathering to come together and celebrate life, express the gratitude. The ritual participants dress in their finest, often wearing red, gold, and green garments with white Ethiopian linen. The ceremony involves hours of chanting, drumming, and sometimes dancing, all performed in a circle. The chants are praises to Jah, and the drumming is always to the summon the spiritual energy and maintain the rhymes or the rhythm of the earth. The circle represents the unity with no beginning or end symbolizing eternal connection to the divine you understand so the hidden aspects what's often not seen by outsiders is the deep meditation prayer that occurs during the groundation the participants enter a trance-like state or some people call it like a holy ghost, or it's allowing them to consume um, with the spiritual realm, seeking guidance, cleansing themselves from Babylon's influences. You understand about the groundation, the ritual of smoking a chalice pipe. Chalice is the is when you light the chalice and um, a chalice pipe is in, it's in your biblical text. Let's talk about the smoking ritual, also known as chalice lighting. While the use of ganja, cannabis, or herbs in Rastafari is well known, the ritual is surrounding itself. The use are often misunderstood or overlooked. You understand because it's not just smoking. The purpose of the herb or the ganja is a sacred herb, a wisdom weed that brings one closer to Jah. 
Sorry about the noise out here. Uh, when smoking, your ritual is not about recreation and use. It's about a native to practice. Hold on one second, let it get this choice. Go far. Still delivering water today. Okay, let's get it started because we down there doing something. So when we're talking about the smoking, the rituals, like I said, it's not about uh, recreation of as we do pass it around, how they do in the states, passing it around. It's about the meditative meditative practice to attend to elevate the spirit, opening the mind, enhancing your spiritual awareness. The ritual, the chalice is a large ceremony pipe. Um, I have three or four of them. You may see me in some videos smoking chalice. Um, it's a big pipe, often made from a coconut shell or like other natural materials like clay. It's filled with the herb, sometimes mixed with other herbs like frankincense. Before smoking, a prayer is uh, offered to Jah asking for the blessing and guidance. So when you smoking your chalice pipe, say a prayer of your things. Get it pass it. You know, her smoke is being inhaled deeply. Often in a circle of group, which each person take a turn. The act of passing the chalice reinforces the community bond. And share spiritual experiences, you understand. The hidden aspects of chalice lighting is also accompanied by a recitation of reading the palms or other sacred texts, infusing into the ritual of the spiritual power. The practice is seen as a form of meditation, and then, you know, when it's you know, the participants see. To reach the higher state of consciousness that connect more deeply with the divine. When you're smoking it, I guess the child will probably give you a, a good brain feeling, you know what I mean, instead of smoking fire. So then the third ritual is Al Kao food. It's a preparation. Another significance, but less visible ritual is preparation of the Atal food. And Rastafara, Ata refers to food that is in its natural period and free from chemicals, reflecting in the belief in living in harmony, the harmony of with the earth. Purposes of the Ata food preparation is a spiritual act meant to nourish not just the body but the soul so you, you eat live food it's a way of respecting life force and its living things and maintaining a clean temple the body the spirit the other span so the ritual process it starts with selecting a uh, Fresh organic ingredients often grown by natural farmers or like other Rastafari in the community. Local food is prepared and prepared often in silence or with prayers and chants. The cook is seen as a conduct transferring positive energy and blessings of the food. Cooking the food is like love, you know what I mean? Cooking over an open fire or using simple tools is preferred, is preferred as it aligns with like natural principles of the Atal and you know I mean? of the natural state. So the hidden aspects, what isn't always seen in meditation and mindfulness, 
they go into the hotel cooking. The cook might meditate on positive intentions or specific blessings for those who will eat their eat the meal. The ritualistic approach to food preparation ensures that the energy of the food is uplifting and pretty. Yeah, it's fine. So when the food is alive, it's uplifting if you're alive, you know what I mean? So for the uh, morning ritual is rising and grounding, you understand? Every morning, many Rastafarians engage in a hidden but powerful morning ritual, often referred to as rising and grounding like i said this practice sets the tone for the day ensuring strong connection with job from the mo moment that you wake up you know what i mean so when you wake up you should give thanks and praise for your breath you know what i mean so when you wake up in morning time just give thanks that you're alive and everything is going good that the most high I give you for the day so the morning ritual is about grounding his, your oneself with Jaws' presence, seeking guidance, and aligning with the divine energy before engaging with the world. You know what I mean? So, like I said in one video before, you wake up in a witching hour, three between three and five, get everything done in the brain before you get out there in Babylon. You know what I mean? So. The ritual begins with the first light of dawn. Rastafarians might start offering a prayer of forgive thanks for life, asking for blessings and protection throughout the day. This is often done facing towards the east. You know what I mean? Some of uh, the uh, bubble shanti use drums hidden towards each corner, four corners of the earth. So if you look to the direction to the east, Direction of the rising of the sun, symbolizing the light of Jah. Meditation follows with some practices, deep breathing exercises, or repeat repeating mantras like Jah Rastafari to the center themselves, or reading from scriptures. Some some Rastas read the Bible, some don't. Um, you can read chant palms is a common uh, book. So the hidden aspects, what is often unseen is in the depth of the introspection and spiritual connection that achieved during the ritual. It's a time for setting intentional intentions, visualizing positive outcomes and seeking inner peace um, before the day challenge. The ritual is, is a deep, personal yet profoundly common or common it is connection to the broader rastafari belief system five the not being your reason session this session is is the lastly let's explore what not being your reason session is a lesser known but essential aspects of rastafari life this is not just a discussion group about a uh, spiritual gathering like some churches do. Um, the members all get together to seek the truth and understanding or overstanding. We all get together and reasoning without causing any friction. You know what I mean? So the purpose of reasoning, the reasoning session are about collective enlightenment where all participants share their wisdom, debate, ideas, interpret special uh, spiritual teachings. It's a way of growing the faith and knowledge um, guided by the principles of love, respect, and unity in all one. You know what I mean? We're all one, I and I. The ritual, these sections are Typically held in a quiet space, you know what I mean? So I said it's best to do it early in the morning or late evening where things calm down, often outdoors in nature, surrounded by surrounded by nature. 
the participants all sit in a circle sim symbolizing equality and take turns speaking. There's a strong emphasis on listening as the belief system of job speaks to everyone, you know. So the discussions often involve uh, around scriptures, understanding life challenges and seeking a way to resist the, the ways of Babylon here in America or the Babylons in Jamaica or wherever you at. So the hidden aspects, what's not always visible is the spiritual death of these sessions. You know what I mean? So the reasoning is seen as a form of collective meditation where the exchange of ideas meant to uplift and enlighten the group. It's also meant uh, time for confessions, stuff you have done where individuals might share personal struggles or seek guidance or forgiveness, reinforcing the community bond. You know what I mean? This is what reason is. A lot of people don't know about reasoning. Some people like to talk about the debate and the reason, but we don't debate in the reason. It seems like it to some. So in the conclusion, these hidden rituals of Rastafari reveals a deep, rich spiritual life that goes beyond the more visible aspects of the movement. Each ritual, whether it's a groundation ceremony, chalice lighting, high food preparation, or morning ritual, or not being your reasoning, serves to strengthen the connection with Jah, the community of Rastafari, and the self. You, that means you. It's all about you. So, by overstanding these practices, we can like gain a deeper appreciation for Rastafari way of life. You know what I mean? A life that is centered on spiritual and unity and living in harmony with nature. That's the Rastafari life. It's a way of life with nature and the divine. If you found this video or video of hidden rituals insight, insightful, please like, share, and subscribe for more content on Rastafari natural life and teachings. Stay blessed and um, May Jah guide you on your spiritual journey. If you like the video, if you have any questions, hit me in a comment because I will start answering y'all's comments. Shalom.